Okay, for lesson 7.5 for algebra, we are going to learn something, again, brand new. We're talking about rational exponents and radicals. So you've got this picture in your notes right here, and this is um, kind of the vocabulary broken down to what um, we're talking about. So the index is what the root value is. This is a radical sign. And the radicand is the number that's basically being um, the big number that usually we're taking some type of a root of. So something you need to know is there's a fancy way to rearrange these if you want to get rid of the radical sign. So you can either have it in radical form or you can have it in exponential form. So I, I actually want you to look at this one because just because my eyes hit it. If you have an 8 as your radicand, and you have an index of 3, you can actually take this 3 and move it to the denominator of a fraction, and the um, radicand bec becomes a whole number. If you're trying to get rid of the radical symbol, the radical sign, this is 8 to the 1 third, and that's because there's like a hidden invisible 1 in here. So whatever's next to the 8 becomes your numerator, and whatever is outside here, the index, becomes your denominator. So it's just something, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're just going to have to memorize this. Um, as you get into upper level math, it's just going to be a given. You're going to have to know that the cube root of 8 is also written as 8 to the 1 3rd power. Um, look at how they did it here. There's nothing in this, and that means square root. Anytime it's blank, that's the same thing as having a 2 there because it's the square root. And so you need to know that that 2 could be the denominator here. 25 has a 1. So it is also written, the square root of 25 could be written as 5 to the 1 half power. So that is another way to write it similarly. Oh, here actually because the square root of 25 is 5. We're going to do the squared 25, sorry, 5 squared is 25. We're going to do this a lot down here. So let's actually go down and look at some examples. The cube root of 125 means what can you multiply three times to get 125? A number times itself times itself again, and that is going to be 5. That's the first method of just solving it. Um, another method is, this is what I was telling you, you really need to know as you get into upper level maths. If it's the fourth root of 16, that's the same thing as saying 16 to the one fourth power. So you just need to know you can write it either or, either way. And so we've also done this before. What number four times, so what number times itself times itself times itself again would end up being 16, and that is two. I'm also going to show you a third method, and that is using your calculator. So let me show you how to use your calculator. If we're talking about a cube root, you're no longer going to just be able to use this square root button. You're going to need to be able to put a 3 in front of it because it needs to be not just a square root but a cube root so or to the third root. So I am no longer looking at this square root in the background here, this kind of orangish color. I need to be using this one. This one, it's hard to see from my, um, from my little... Um, blurry calculator here, but that is an X, which means you can make it whatever you want. So right now I want to make it a three. So I'm going to put in a three first, and then I'm going to put it, push the second button because I need to switch it to the X root. And it looks like this. Now I'm going to put in 125, and I'm just going to push equals. It's five. So you can also use your calculator to get the answer. Okay, so here is practice with our got it. I, I know you can just put this in your calculator. I just also want you to see it in exponent form because there's some of your problems today in homework that say, don't give me the final answer. Give it to me in exponent form. So this exponent would be 27 to the 1 third. Just kind of memorize it. If it's to the third root, it's 27 to the 1 third. But you're going to get a final answer as well. So I'm going to put it in my calculator. Three cube root of 27 equals 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. The fifth root of 32 could also be written as 32 to the 1 -fifth power. I just want you to see that and know it. The more I say it, the more I want you to memorize that this is the radical version and this is the exponent version of the same thing. These are just saying the same thing. 
what number times itself times itself times itself times itself times itself five times would be 32. So we're going to put it, practice putting it in your calculator. So I'm going to push 5, and then my shift, and then my x to the root button of 32, and it is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 would be 32. All right? 64 cube root would be the same thing as saying 64 to the 1 third power in your calculator. The cube root of 64 is 4. That means 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay, and then usually you don't see a 2. Usually if it's a square root, it'll just be like this because that's just the automatic square root. If there's nothing there, you assume it's a 2. What number times itself is 36? It's 6. Oh, but this could also be written in radical form as 36 to the 1 half exponent. So if it asks you to write it in exponent form, this is it. But if it wants you to just solve it, you're just going to solve it out. Okay. Oh, here we go. Converting it into radical form. So now I'm giving you a fraction um, exponent, and I want you to give me the radical. I want you to give me the square root button, um, square root symbol. So 12 doesn't have an exponent on it. So 12 is going to stay outside. But the a to the 2 thirds is going to go into radical form. So you've got an a here. All right, let's think this through. The numerator is going to go with the a. This is going to stay in with the radicand. The denominator is what your root is going to be. It's what your index is. So this is the final answer. I know this is weird. You're just going to have to get used to how it works. In a fractional exponent, the numerator goes with the um, radicand, stays under, and the denominator is what your root value is. Let's practice it a few times. I think you just need to have it in your notes and you just need to see it um, a few times. So let's make our radical. A is what's here. The numerator, 5, goes with the A. And the 6 is the root value. All right, 5 stays out. 5 does not have an exponent on it, so 5 is going to stay outside the radical. However, x is going to go in along with the 1, which I'm going to leave hidden and visible, because if it's a 1, you don't need it. And the 3, the denominator of 3, is going to be the cube root. OK, if, um, if you've got those, then you should be able to do it opposite. So now I've given it to you in this form, and I want you to write it with a fractional exponent. So basically, we're just doing what we did above, opposite. So we know b is going to have a 3 in the numerator, and 5, the fifth root, is going to be the denominator. So again, you just need to practice it a few times. b to the th 3 fifths, b to the 3 fifths power. Um, OK, for the 27, this one has a little bit more work because the 27 is going to also, since it's inside, is going to also have the 5 thirds. So I want to write it like this. Here, I'll start by writing it like this so you understand. 27 d to the fifth. If all of it comes out, there's a hidden invisible 1 third because the 3 is the root. We need to distribute, basically, I'm using that term, to the 27 and to the d to the fifth. So it's going to be written at first like 27 to the 1 third times d to the fifth to the 1 third. So let me, let me remind you what to do if it's to the fifth and that whole thing is to the 1 third. You need to multiply these in. So it's like saying 5 times 1 third, which you can use your calculator, or you know that's going to be over a hidden invisible 1 and multiply straight across, straight across. So this is going to be the equivalent of d to the 5 thirds. Okay, that's what that is. We've also still got 27 to the 1 third. So here's what you can do. If you know that 27 to the 1 third power, you can simplify this. You can either use your calculator or you can think of what number times itself times itself is 27. Um, you can probably do that in your head, but since we're practicing using this, I want to do the cube root 
of, oh, sorry, the cube root of 27, and that is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So your final answer here, this part turns into 3, and you still have your d to the 5 thirds. So that's all you can do with that. Okay, that was a lot of steps. You might review doing that. Um, if you're ready, though, to try a got it, go ahead and try A and B down here, um, putting them with exponents in exponential form. Okay, just having this memorized, S2 is your to the squared. That's going to be your numerator. 3 is going to be your denominator. So this answer is S to the 2 thirds. This one, the 12 was outside, so we don't have to actually worry about it. It's just going to stay there. X to the 4 thirds. So X to the 4 is your numerator. The root 3 is your denominator, and that's all you can do there. Okay, let's look at the back of this page. The back of this page is basically just problems you're going to see on your homework, so I wanted to go through several of them with you so you can have them in your notes um, to refer back to. But this one says rewrite it without exponents. So I don't want an exponent, which means instead I want a radical. So basically, if I have x to the 1 seventh power, that's the same thing as putting it in a radical, x, 1 is going to be the numerator, so it's going to stay there, but I'm going to leave it invisible, and 7 is the root. So this is how to write it without using exponents. Number 2 is the exact opposite. Now we have a radical, and I want to write it with an exponent. Okay, so this instruction should have only been on 1. This one's the exact opposite, so now I want an exponent. So this one should say with exponents, whatever. All right, x to the 4 is your numerator, 7 is your denominator. So that's all there is to it, x to the 4 sevenths. Okay, fourth root of 625, um, it actually wants the value, so you can just put it in your calculator. Um, but just so that you guys can see this practiced again, that is the same thing as 625 to the 1 fourth power. But then I actually want you to solve it. So fourth root is 4. I have to shift it to get this one to 625 equals 5, which means 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 equals 625. The cube root of 729, it could also be written as 729 to the 1 third power. Again, I'm just doing this to show you that these are the same thing. You'll see it either way, and you need to be able to transfer back and forth to it at any given time. And then I'm going to solve it in my calculator. Cube root of 729 equals 9. 9 times 9 times 9 must be 729. Okay, on number 5, 25 is outside of the exponent, so it can stay on its own. It can just be 25. And then x to the 1 half, I want you to remember that you can throw the x in there with a 1 that we're going to leave invisible and a 2 that would go here. And I'm okay if you put the 2 there. I'm not sure Math Excel wants you to, though, because if you leave it blank, you assume that it's a square root because this is the technical square root value um, symbol. Okay, number 6. You are going to, oh, these are review. X's are the same base. Anytime you're multiplying numbers with the same base, you can add their exponents. So we're going to add 7 eighths plus 1 half. I'm going to honestly just put it in my calculator. 11 eighths. So our answer is X to the 11 eighths power. All right, over here, we have got, this one's going to take a minute because I need to distribute half to the 64 and to the X and distribute the other half to the 25 and to the x. So our original amounts are 64 to the 1 half, x to the 1 half, times 25 to the 1 half, times x to the 1 half. Wow, okay, there's a lot going on here. So 64 to the 1 half is the same thing as square root of 64, which we know what times itself is Eight. So I'm going to make this whole thing 8. x to the 1 half I'm going to deal with here in a minute, so let's just leave it. 25 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 25, which is 5. So I'm going to get rid of that whole thing and call it 5. 
x to the 1 half I'm going to leave for now. All right. These numbers are all squished together, so they're getting multiplied. So 8 times 5 is 40. And if these x's are the same base, which they are, you can add their exponents. So we have x to the 1 half plus another 1 half. And you can use your calculator, but I'm here to tell you that half plus half is one whole. So we've got 40x to the 1 whole. And remember, anytime you have a 1, you can just leave it hidden and invisible. So I'm just going to call my final answer 40x. All right, last couple of problems. Um, this just wants you to make sure it's in exponential form. So they don't want the radicals. They just want exponents. So x squared with a, cute, with a fifth root is just the same as saying x to the 2 fifths power. And again, you should have that memorized by now. That's just how to rearrange it, basically. And we're subtracting x to the nothing there means there's a hidden invisible 1. So this is going to be the equivalent of x to the 1 fifth. And it didn't say to solve it. It just said write it with exponents. So this is going to be your final answer. So we're not actually subtracting. We're just rewriting it in exponential form because using exponents. Okay, and then the last one, again, just write it in exponential form. So this has a hidden invisible 1 on it, which is going to be x to the 1 third. This one is also x to the 1 third. Those are the same. And this one is also x to the 1 third. So just saying if they would make you go ahead and solve it, if it said then simplify, which it probably does on MathXL, if it said to simplify, we would go ahead and say, OK, these all three have the same base. So we can add 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third. And 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third is one whole, which means it's just x.